It is the response to a nightmare, an event that shook the world and changed the Secret Service forever. President Kennedy loved people, loved to be around people. We had gone from President Eisenhower, who was a retired general, to a former senator who was uh, very free and, and, and wanted to do things that we were not used to having him do. We went from the hotel to the airport and flew from Fort Worth to Dallas in Air Force One. And uh, there was a large crowd at the airport in Dallas. November 1963. President and Mrs. Kennedy are in Texas to rally support for the next presidential election. Their two-day trip includes a motorcade through Dallas. Clint Hill is assigned to protect Mrs. Kennedy. He is stationed on the runners of the follow-up car, directly behind the presidential limousine. Along the way, there were large crowds. We stopped a couple times to permit the people to shake hands with the president. got into the central part of Dallas, the crowds were larger. As we proceeded down through the center of Dallas, on occasion I would move from the follow-up car up to the back of the presidential limousine. Shortly after we got into that turn and started on that street, I heard a sound. I turned to see what was happening. I knew something was wrong. I saw President Kennedy grab at his throat. Before I could get to the presidential limousine, another shot had been fired and hit President Kennedy in the head. About that time, I reached the back of the limousine and tried to get on. I had to run three or four more steps before I could get out. By that time, Mrs. Kennedy had come out onto the trunk and was seeming, it appeared to me to be searching for something or trying to retrieve something. But I got up on the back of the car and placed her back in the seat. The president at that time, his slipped down into her lap, and I could see the back of his head, and there was a gaping hole above his right ear, about the size of my palm. And there was white brain matter and red blood throughout the entire car. We then, the car jolted forward, and we sped off to Parkland Hospital. As a stunned nation struggled with the enormous tragedy of a young president's murder, the Secret Service couldn't stop to mourn. They quickly moved to protect the new president. But the assassination shook the organization to its base and left the agents on the detail devastated. It was our responsibility to protect the president, and we failed to do so. Any time that uh, you have a job to do and you don't do it, you failed. The failure to protect Kennedy forced the Secret Service to ask difficult questions. Should the president be allowed to ride in an open car? Should motorcade routes be published in advance? And should those routes follow paths where the president can be an easy mark? Whatever the answers, Things would never change for Clint Hill. It's something that will never go away. I still, still have to have nightmares about it. It bothered me from that point on, uh, and it got progressively worse. Eventually, that's the reason I retired, is that the doctors finally told me that you just can't go on. Unfortunately, that particular day, 
All the advantages went to the shooter. The assassination is still a defining moment, not only for the agency, but for every agent who has ever taken the oath. You don't think about your wife or your children or your own life. Your, your whole focus is to save the president. And I'm sure that's what went through Clint's head as he bolted for the, to that car, barely making it, but he got back there and it was too late. And uh, we're, we're all different from that. I mean, we're just different from having having lived through it. If eternity has to remember me for something that was that tragic, I just couldn't live with myself. So, you know, my philosophy was, it won't happen on my watch. It can't happen on my watch because I can't live with it. The assassination forced the Secret Service to rethink protection. Training was completely revamped. The number of agents jumped dramatically and the service developed state-of-the-art threat assessment abilities. Riding in an open car would become the rare exception to the rule. The car would become armored and sealed, a rolling fortress, the very embodiment of the protective bubble.